today I want to talk about a little something that's sort of in the background uh, regarding your experience with narcissists and what you are likely to experience and think about. Not so much what you go through emotionally, but just when you are approaching it, I guess somewhat intellectually, somewhat logically. Something that you'll kind of notice and possibly reach on your own. However, it may take you some time and it may be a very, your path may be different from mine than how I reached this. In fact, I actually, I think I thought about this a long time ago, but it never really stuck in my mind. And just when I was glancing over um, some literature on narcissism, I happened to see this word used to describe their behavior and the cluster of personality disorders that they were categorized in, that they were classified as, they are no longer within that cluster. And it has to do with kind of two contrasting viewpoints. When you think of narcissists, in a psychological sense, you have to describe them as neurotic. And all that means is that there's some kind of disorder, but they are more functional than, say, somebody who's psychotic, who may be experiencing hallucinations or delusions that mess with their perception of reality, versus a narcissist who we assume does not have those things. They do not have persistent, say, delusions. Now, that may not be totally accurate. I, I've always been kind of stuck in between those two worlds where how do we know that they're not delusional? I'm pretty sure they're not hallucinating. Okay, you can, you can take that out. But how do we know they're not completely delusional? I mean, they seem to be possessed by some kind of delusion or other. And how can you not, how can you not find a connection between the illusion and their behavior and delusions? Now, just so it's clear, a delusion may be a persistent belief that while very difficult to disprove or not really formulated in a way that you could disprove, it's just extremely unlikely extremely against what the evidence bears out. It does not seem to be the case. So in a, in a way you could argue that they're delusional. I tend to regard them personally as delusional, but in describing them to you, I, I can't really call them delusional because there are different um, people and their behaviors that you would describe as delusional and they differ from the narcissists. Theirs is kind of a persistent self-delusion as a defensive type response, a reaction, um, in a way. Now, that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist aside from the illusion. Because you'll notice the illusion is always there. It's always running. It's a part of them. And... Just because it has a lot of things in common that may appear delusional, there are still significant differences in, in what we would traditionally call delusional people or, or people with delusional disorders and what the narcissist actually does. And there's just, because the illusion is so wrapped up in the narcissism aspect of it, that kind of differentiates them from other people who may have delusions. And so it doesn't really, it doesn't really present itself as delusional. It doesn't really fit the criteria, rather, of a delusional disorder. And yet, from a personal point of view, it kind of is. It's a delusion. It's something that is just not true. However, I know I say that a lot, and it's become apparent to me that it is extremely useful to view them as such. As far as protecting yourself and your own interests and your own family's safety and, and whoever else you care about, 
to get to that point in your mind that they are mentally ill and that they aggressively hold on to ideas that benefit them at everybody's expense, often, if not always, for the purpose of hurting other people. So there's kind of a duality there. It protects them and or by hurting other people. It's not just a, it's a, they're people dependent and so it all has to do with how people perceive them. It's not something that they have to believe on their own as their relationship with the world in order to feel safe or in control or whatever it is that they are desiring and going after, trying for, trying to make real. It has to do with people and the people around them and the people who are listening to them. Because as I've said before, probably ad nauseum, is this really difficult thing of the narcissist around people and the narcissist away from people. What do they do when people aren't around? Well, naturally, that's really hard to figure out because there's nobody around. Now, the few times I've caught glimpses of narcissists when there's nobody else around um, or when they think there's nobody else around, but you happen to see them, they're quite different. Now, it's just an inkling. It's just an observation. But it's different. And to me, that lends a lot of uh, support to what I just said, which is that there are, that it's a people-centric thing, and, and their behavior changes with respect to who they're around, who they think they're around, who they think is watching, who they think is paying attention to them. That seems a little off topic for this video, but it begs the question, how aware are narcissists within their environment? How much do they actually know what is going on? To what extent do they act on their beliefs, their so-called beliefs? How do we how do we distinguish what they say with what they do? Because I'm, I'm running on the assumption that they act on what they believe. They can say anything, everything under the sun, and they do sometimes, or very often. But what are they actually going to do at the end of the day? What is their choice? Fortunately, it's usually a very, very strict pattern. How much can you relate that pattern to a wild and detached delusion or disconnected worldview? How much do they really act on that? Well, and this is where the caveat really comes in, which is you don't usually find them doing a lot of strange things. It's not that they don't do strange things, but that the pattern is not usually going to entail strange things that people are noticing all the time. They're very, very well hidden. And so that's where the delusional disorder to narcissism connection kind of breaks down, where they have similarities, but they're just not the same thing. In a sense, they are hyper aware, far more aware than you or I are in many different situations of the subtle things going on. Now, as I've said before, I'm not sure this is all purely cognitive and purely of their own action, but more of their upbringing and an adaptation or some form of conditioning. It is so natural to them. They may like to think of it if they're able to comprehend it fully, but they like to think of it as something that they're makes them special. It's something that they're endowed with that other people simply don't have. And yet, that's not really accurate. Um, it, it, it appears to me that many narcissists possess that kind of acute awareness. At the same time, they're often very unaware of situations and things catch them off guard all the time because they're not emotionally aware. They're not really emotionally connected. It's, it's an emulation. It's a dance. It's, it's a show. And it holds up pretty well most of the time. But there are systemic breakdowns where the where it just simply doesn't work anymore because they do not have the capacity to understand other people and connect with them on a deep emotional level because they themselves are not emotionally aware they are not connected 
with themselves. They're not actually sure what's driving their behavior. Now, the, the, the thing about this video is that it, it's bringing up all these questions. It's, it's one of those things that is definitely asking more questions than it answers. And yet, I think it's very, very important because on, the, on a personal basis, in my personal experience, I found it to be extremely um, helpful to categorize them as at least a little bit insane. Now, that's a strong word, but they're not, they're not sane in the same way. They're, they can be functional in the sense that they're able to do the things they need to do, the necessary things to survive. But to say that they can take care of themselves is not really accurate. They can't really do that. At least I'll say most of them can't. Most true narcissists are incapable of taking care of themselves. They need help. Now, it's not that they can't figure things out on their own. It's not that they actually can't do them or they can't, um, they have some kind of deficit or inability to do the things they need to do. It has to do with the emotional part and I guess in some sense the delusional part that I'm referring to within them where they are simply not sustainable on their own. They cannot sustain anything with their own will except controlling other people. And trying to bring this back to the, the crucial topic I'm, this video is about, which is the relationship between the delusion, um, the delusion that I would ascribe to them without saying, without, I'm not ready to accept that they're completely delusional. And yet the illusion is a delusion. It is. There's a number of things that um, position them in such a way so that it is never really falsified. It can be attacked. It can be threatened by other people who um, in some way disprove it. But it's not a logical thing. It's an emotional thing. And, and, when, I, and when I say that, I mean you, you aren't going to disprove their illusion um, with reason. It has to do with how they feel about themselves and who they think they are and how people regard them. And that's where it differs with a delusion, which can be falsified because it's a concrete belief which is simply not true or extremely unlikely or very unlikely, at least. Anyway, that's just food for thought. I hope you like this video. Like it if you do, share it with somebody you think might benefit from it. Comment on what you think about um, the delusion, illusion connection, if there is any. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.